Our next guest this evening is a dance choreographer and model, resident of Toronto, Canada, but truly Ghanaian at heart and in her art. In her art, indeed. She's worked with huge names from Drake to Flowrider and Nelly Furtado. Not to mention appearing on So You Think You Can Dance Canada. But that's not all she stopped. Uh, she st that's all she stopped by you. I know you've made a lot of impact, but no. She stopped by here in London, fresh from Ghana, here to tell us all about it and her first performance in the UK last Friday. It's AC. Welcome to Living the Life. Thank you very Welcome. much for having me. Thank you very much for joining us. Have you been to the UK before? Nope, it's actually my first time. Really? How do you find it? Does it, does it live up to all of the, <laughs> the reputations? Because I'm sure you heard about we like to drink tea. Yes. And yeah. we've got lots of red telephone boxes. And, 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 and the double-decker buses. Double-decker buses. Yes. We talk a lot about the weather and yes. stuff. Has it lived up to your expectations? Um, it, it's actually exceeded my expectations. It's been uh, such a beautiful time here, being in London. And, you know, so much has happened, and I'm only a few days in. So it's yeah. been really great. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. And of course, you did, of course, come from Ghana, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Was it four weeks you spent out there? Yes, I spent four weeks in Ghana. Um, I was actually able to go through a grant from Canada's Art Council. Uh, so they were able to fund me to go. I did some training with uh, the national company, Ghana Dance Ensemble, and um, just really soaked in the culture. Um, a, a lot of the purpose of my trip was to just do research and uh, gain information about Ghana. I'm writing a production and a full-length dance theatre play that's actually going to be happening later on this year in Canada called Akuma. And, um, what and does Akuma mean? Uh, Akuma means the heart. The heart. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. So it's a journey about a young man that travels from Ghana to Canada and then his decision to return home. Um, and all of it is centered around music, 1970s Afrobeat music, and being able to remix that music into something new. I guess, I mean, it must be semi-autobiographical in yeah. as much as yes. you're from Ghana yourself and you settled in, in Canada. How much of a Ghanaian community is there in Canada? Are they, are they quite visual? Are they quite well known? Uh, I would say definitely. I, um, I probably would even say more so when I was growing up. I, I was born in Hamilton, Ontario, which is about an hour away from Toronto. And uh, a lot of my culture in terms of growing up was based mm. in, in when we were child, when we were children. Uh, my parents made it known that we needed to understand the culture. So we got a chance to know the dances, a lot of the, you know, the things that we probably take advantage for now, um, or now at this point in time in our lives, where outdoorings, funerals, a lot of the processions, yeah. the weddings, how things are done. Um, we saw so much of it. We were part of a festival um, a lot called Karasaga. She was really keen, wasn't she, your mother, to keep oh, you in touch oh, with, yes. that, with that, with that, uh, the basic where you came from and in touch with your roots. Yes, and I think that it's one of those things where you want to be able to give your children that little yeah. bit so that way that you know that if your parents leave you, you have something to carry yeah. forward. And I, that was the most that I was able to take away from Ghana too was the, the time where I can actually sit there and enjoy and be with people and, and know that I can carry this forward throughout my mm. art. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, you've worked some huge names, haven't you? From yes. Flowrider, Nelly yes. Furtado, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're very modest about it. I saw your <laughs> website today. It's like that long with all the artists you work with. That's yeah. an amazing career, isn't it? it? It has been. It's really been an amazing career that I'm really thankful for. Um, and just to be able to, to say that I was able to share in those experiences, to dance on the big stages, to dance on tour, or dance in music videos, it's... it's you know, pretty glamorous, uh, even though it's not always so glamorous, but um, it's still a pretty glamorous thing to, to have and say that, no, I knew these people and I was able to work with them. Incredible also that you were, of course, recognised by your own country's government. I mean, a lot of yeah. people aspire, don't they, to yes. be leading the way through cultural affairs and different departments and embassies, etc. Where did that step come from? Um, it was really from, like, my mentors and colleagues around me. Um, I'm pretty sure just like, like Britain, uh, Canada is very supportive of the arts in mm. very different ways. And, you know, it might be a very trying process, a very long process in terms of grant writing, but um, this year so far I was able to accept three, three grants, um, wow. all really towards my project, Akuma. Um, so the, the Canada Council, and then I was able to get one or two from my province, uh, both creation for the script that I wrote and, you know, to develop the dancing as well. Yeah. How was it for you when you went back to Ghana for the first time? Because the the, the image that you have and the mm. feelings that we have as expats, as people living in, in, in other lands or as part of the diaspora, mm -hmm. is very different often from what you actually yeah. find when you go back. How did you find was that was did you do you think you had a realistic idea of what Ghana was like or did it did it really throw you when you went? Um I think when I first got there, I I probably had my own ideas and ideologies of what I would be carrying in terms of what Africa 
really represents, especially so strongly in the diaspora. Uh, but being there, it was very different. Mm. Um, it it kind of threw me for a loop um, a lot of times. That, it's very yeah. conservative um, in a lot of different ways, um, especially the women. The women are very conservative in terms of how they act and dress. And it was just like, oh, wow. You know, the idea of what I had of Africa was very, was very different. But at the same time, yeah. I, I knew that I needed to come in very open um, to be able to receive all of the, you know, the information and the knowledge that I can really take in. I think there's an experience common to many people who's, whose parents emigrated yes. to other lands, which is that they spend their time growing up, like in the UK, being told that you're an Asian, yeah. and then you go back to the country, you're told that you're from the UK, <laughs> like, everyone yeah. you're a Canadian. I know, it's like you feel confused yeah. so many times, you know. I'm like, okay, so what am I, even being there? Yeah. Um, you know, my hair's in, my hair's shaved on both sides, yeah, I'm a dancer, so, different. you know, I'm very different, so a lot of people were like, are you sure you're Ghanaian? Yeah, are yeah. you sure, are you sure you're a part of us? And yeah, I was like, yeah. nope, I'm pretty sure. They're like, are you sure you're not from Zimbabwe? <laughs> or they start naming other countries, I was like, no, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure I know who my parents yeah, are. They're yeah. your relatives. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was the you know the little bit of. It almost felt like a. It was a stab at times, but then at the same time, it kind of gives you that that coat of arms to say, you know what? No, I'm proud of who I am. Yeah, I'm proud of so. of my of my Africanness. So even if I may not be able to per se represent just Ghana, but you're kind of opening opening me up to say that very I can actually be all all over the continent. Essentially. Very interesting.